We are here at UCLA in beautiful Los Angeles, California, where it's a sunny day on the 28th, 27th of July. We're about to be persuaded by Tao, who's about to give us her persuasive speech. Uh, I'm Tao. Hi, Tao. Every time I think about Mary, my neighbor, um, I remember her face, her smile, her love, laughing, and I remember she, how she taught me to ride a scooter. If she was still alive, she would, at our age, and go to college, have friends and class. But she won't have this chance, not because of cancer, not because of natural disaster, but because of a drunk driver. Today, I want to persuade you not to drink and drive. I will give you two reasons and some action and benefit you will get. Um, I believe no one in this room wants to die in a, car, in a car accident, especially like alcohol related accident, because this is so innocent and inevitable. The first reason I want to persuade you not to drink and drive, because drinking and dri driving cause serious deaths and injuries and it will bring sadness to your family members. Um, the research by Phyllis, 2014 from UCSD, uh, indicates like driving is impaired by even co uh, blood concentration, blood alcohol content at 0.01%. And there is no safe combination of drinking and driving. So um, from, from the evidence, like many high school students drink and uh, drink and drive. Um, even though they think they drink a little alcohol, only a little alcohol, but this could still affect them, like not quick make decision on the road. And this would cause them easily involved into a car accident, um, make themselves and others um, death and uh, injuries, and this will bring like sadness to their family members. Mm. Another set statistic coming from the National Highway Traffic um, Safety um, Administration shows that, like in 2012, um, there were 10,322 fatalities in the alcohol-related accidents, which like the driver has a BAC with 0 0.08 or higher, and this accounting for total 31 percent of the total traffic fatalities in the years. These data are boring. I want all of you to think this way. If no one um, drink and drive on the road, this total 10,322 people are still alive today. All of their family members, friends, and even co-workers will not be in pain. They will have happier lives with the one they love. And Mary on, were on the streets, and a car hit on the road walk and hit her from the back and crashed into the building on the street and she passed away in the hospital. This car was driven by a drunk driver. When I heard about when I hear of her death from her mother, I did not know what to say to her. She could not throw back her tears, her voice like her voice stopped caught in her um, sorrow and we looked into each other. Two tearful eyes with two tearful eyes. And she then broke down like quite loud. As a friend, I heard, as family member, they must be deeply grieved at the rest of their life. I feel sad, but I feel angry about this drinking and driving. I feel that there should be no reason to drink and drive. Drinking and driving is drunk drivers don't have any sense of responsibility for others' lives. And drinking and driving just like murder and cause innocent people die and cause their family member live like the dead. And the second reason I want you not to drink and drive is because drinking and driving is caused by human itself. It's a choice. It can be avoidable. And research done by Greta found that a medium-based prevention messages were best in the um, in those like in the population that will this AID problem is serious in their communities. Um, if people 
consider this drinking and driving is a serious problem and should be prevented by taking actions, then lots of campaign would be effectively influence people not to drink and drive. So then the number of accidents would be reduced. And another statistic from the government um, website shows like on July 4th in the far on July 4th, in the past five years, there are 750 people were killed in this like alcohol-related accidents, accounting for 39% of the total number of the whole year. Um, so from here, why there are more deaths and more accidents in the on the holiday than the work day? This is because people, when people go to work and go to school, they less likely to drink. But on holiday, they relax and tend to drink and write. So, in other words, this accident, this death can be inevitable as long as people choose either to drink or to drive, but do not choose the combination of both. And for my personal experience, like I have three cousins. We have party on holiday to, on July 4th or Christmas. We have a party rules. Each time we designate a person as a driver, this driver cannot drink cannot eat any food that's cooked by the alcohol. Either he like sit three or four steps away from the people who was drinking alcohol because he could not like absorb any alcohol in the air or smell alcohol in the air. And we all follow these rules like drink not dry, dry not drink. And I felt our rules is very good and because I, oh, I'm proud that like we follow it each time we did not violate it. Uh, even once, and we keep it in our daily lives. And this is an attitude to be responsible for not our lives, but also other people's lives. So I strongly believe that if people choose to drink or to drive, then no death and no accident at all. And now I want to propose some action to prevent drinking and driving. First, I propose you um, follow our party's rules. Second, I propose you to Go to the website MADD, Mother Against Drinking and Driving. You can look up their activity campaigns and look up, look up their um, comments and annual reports. The last one is every parent as a role model for their children to follow, to drink or to drive. And all of you be a role model, give an give a identity, identity appeal to all of your friends. So in summary, um, I give... So in summary, I when you take these actions, how will you feel? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, when this action is taken, some benefit could be received. First is that you will not drink and drive to hurt yourself and others. The second is like um, the number of drunk driver will be decreased in each generation. Third is like the fatalities will be become zero. The last one is like you, your family member will not suffer from the pain of losing the one they love. And in summary, I told you, in summary, I told you two reasons and some action and benefit you will receive. And I, I think it should be no doubt that in this room, like everyone should not drink and drive. So every time I saw someone use cable and using scooter on campus on on the street near my home, and I, Mary's face will show in my head. It still hurts. So to drink or to drive, it's just about a choice, but save lives. Time. Sorry about the timing, I know. Uh, 808. 808, holy Toledo. Okay, who hasn't, oh yeah, we haven't heard from you lately. Then you can talk. Hi, I'm Joseph. What? Oh. Okay, uh, sorry, have a seat. What'd you like? I am Jenny. Hi, Hi, Jenny. I liked how the story was really personal, how you talked about your friend that was hit and they passed away because of it, and it made it have so much more emotion to it and more effects to your ideas. Yes. Hi, I'm Fernando. Hi, Fernando. Um, I really loved your speech. I thought you put a lot of emotion into it, and I really liked that. 
um, two little things are maybe you make a lot of eye contact with the camera and the people around <laughs> it. <laughs> and, and the people around it, but like the edges of the room in the back, I don't think got a lot of eye contact. So maybe that can be one thing. And the other thing is um, when you move your hands, I don't know if you're aware of this, but like only one hand moves and the other like stays in the same um, <laughs> your, your left hand stays in the same spot and your right hand moves a lot. So I think if you become more aware of your hand gestures, like they could be a bit more symmetrical, I guess. But I thought it was really great. All right. Those were good comments, Fernando. Thank you. Uh, were you aware of that? Uh, no. Uh -huh. Well, uh, step back just a little step back. You're, a little, you're close to the camera. I like the way you came in and really sold your speech to the audience. It was hard for me to keep you on camera, but uh, it's, it was good. Okay, step forward is good. Yeah. Um, gosh, uh, Tao, uh, I think this was your best speech. Uh, you did a really good job. You didn't mince any words. You started out with your friend Mary, and you gave her a name, so it wasn't just you know some blank thing out there. You gave us the details about running, laughing, riding a scooter, and yet that's not going to happen anymore because she was killed by a drunk driver. So right away you set the tone with a good story that was from you, and we could tell right away you were personally impacted by irresponsible people drinking and driving. Your thesis, your preview were excellent. Your first reason was it causes serious death. David Phillips is your professor. 2014 good recent research Department of Sociology at UC SD, stress those things with your voice. So those, are, those build the credibility of your author, see? Uh, said even a little bit impairs you, right? That was your argument, true? Yeah. Um, and so I thought that was good because uh, people, uh, some people have the belief that, you know, two beers are, are innocent and you can, you're fine with two beers. And... A lot of the research says you're not fine with two beers. You're significantly impaired with two beers. So uh, that was good research. And that wasn't the only research you had for your first point. You had the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in 2012. And you cited a whole bunch of statistics. And basically the, 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 um, the corker was 30% 31% of all traffic fatalities are somehow alcohol related. One third, that's a big number. And it's a sad number. Now, what did your text, what did you learn from your text about using statistics? Um, the statistics need to relate you to human sense and human experience. The you need to relate to humans. Yeah. And need to mention in the relationship, not like just pure number. A relationship, and very good. Thank you. And how did you link this to the relationship? I just changed the angle to let you think about it. If like that accident didn't happen, these these people are still alive and with their family members. Good, perfect. Okay, and I could really feel your emotion when you met her mother, and you both broke down and cried, you relived that, you felt, sensed it, and so we all got it, we felt your sadness at that moment, that was really excellent. On your second reason, um, you talked about Robert Gouret, a PhD, talking about uh, Drinking and driving can be counteracted with uh, certain campaigns and the sort of thing that can be effectively influence people not to drink and drive. And then you cited again more uh, national highway safety statistics to buttress your point. Here's where I think that you were gilding the lily. I think that when you, you were so much overtime, you could have just had one of these quotes, not both of them, would have been sufficient. 
um, on your actions. The one I loved all your actions. I thought they were good. One action I never hear people say anymore, and I suppose it's a joke. But you can say the first action is don't drink. Find another way to enjoy social intercourse with people with a seven up or whatever, you know, but it's not always necessary to have alcohol to have a good time. Find another way. Uh, and uh, so people don't talk about abstinence, but you could have probably mentioned that. I thought your actions were excellent. Uh, I think that uh, having people uh, go on the uh, MAD website, that's a very uh, dramatic website. Uh, you know, very, uh, you can't look at some of these pictures without, uh, you know, realizing that drinking and driving is a very serious problem. You almost skipped the benefits, but fortunately it came to you that you should put benefits in. Because that's, a, that's an important part of selling you know, the speech, that they'll get benefits, eh? Save yourself money, it won't make your liver into a doormat, you know, it's good, good benefits, you know. Uh, and doubt in the room, and so then you tie back to your friend Mary in the end, so that was good. Your goals were to speak clearly, have a better eye, have better tie back and better eye contact, how to go? I, I don't know it's bad. Uh, why is that? I don't care at the screen. I mean, the camera. You're looking at the camera, so yeah. so you're doing your close-up, Mr. DeMille. Huh? Okay. Um, why is that? You just felt the camera was most important, or um, is, uh, what about Brittany? Doesn't she deserve a look? <laughs> Yeah, well, um, it's something you need to work on because people will notice how that you're not looking at them and they'll feel left out and you'll be less effective. Let's quickly go through your success. Talk to us. Okay, the first one is the simple. My idea is simple, just like stop people and do not drink and drive and not other like, choices. Like, like. Good. And the second is like... Unexpected. Um, unexpected. Unexpected, yeah. yes. Um, unexpected. Unexpe yeah, it's the, there is unexpected. It's like usually people think like some kind of the combination of drinking and driving, as long as the drinking is not that not that large amount, that would not affect the driving at yeah. all. But, but my idea is like it, it did, as long as a little alcohol will affect it. And it's not just your idea, scientific and evidence shows yes, that also there's a relationship between even a tiny amount of drinking and impairment, yeah. The last one, let's see, for concrete. Um, yeah, I give concrete, it's Thing, just with your voice, stress the year of your study so your audience knows it's recent. So in 2014, the National Highway Safety Council said, see, ooh, she gestured at there. Yeah. The last one, that's see. The biggie. Oh, emotion? Yes. Emotion, yeah, I have strong emotion. Yes, I felt this was your most emotional speech, didn't you, class? 
Can you really feel her emotions come through today? Yeah. And? The last one is story. Stories and more stories, yeah. Yeah, story, um, yeah, I give two stories. Yeah. Okay, very nice job. Just work on brevity. It was too long. Thank you. Very nice job. Okay, we have another volunteer. Free country. People are dying in Iraq. I did a bit of modification, but it's not shown on our lines. What? A bit of modification. Okay, we like modification. Hang on a minute. Tall, aren't you? Gosh, okay. You're good. I got you. Okay. Joseph stands before you managing attention, communicating respect non verbally, finding friendly eyes near the front and the center so your name feels the love. Persuade us, Joseph. Hi, I'm Joseph. Hi, Joseph. Do you know that Albert Einstein can play piano? Uh, can play violin? Yes. He started to play violin since at the age of six, and he can play the Mozart sonata at the age of 13. That means he's quite a skillful violinist because his mother is also a talented musician that influenced him to pick out a violin and learn it. So he said, uh, uh, the most joyful thing happened in my life is playing music. So, uh, the life is in inconceivable without playing music. So, today I want to persuade you that you should learn, a instru learn an instrument. Uh, I'm going to offer you two reasons and uh, three actions that you can take. So, the first reason that you should learn an instrument it is because that uh, it will change the way you listen to music completely. So myself, I play guitar. So after I learned playing guitar, I, the way I listen to the songs, uh, it is completely changed. Because now I understand the chords, the different instruments, the, the notes, the skills they used in, uh, in the songs. So like... Uh, like you finally understand the foreign language, like said French, like the way you understand music is completely different, like you finally understand French. So um, I like my, uh, there's one of my favorite singer, uh, Kurt Cobain, so finally I learned to play guitar, so I understand him, he usually turn his guitar half step down and uh, he, sometimes he messes up all the notes in the solos at the live concert. So, the second reason I want you to learn an instrument is it is because that uh, it benefits our brain. Because uh, there's an article named uh, behavior, uh, "Behavior and uh, the article is named uh, Neural and the Behavior Correlates of executive, executive Functioning." in musician and non-musician is published at June 2014 and uh, it is an article about the playing instrument will improve our brain functioning in executive, executive thinking. That includes uh, planning, strategy, uh, strategizing and uh, Attention to detail. And attention to details. So it will result in better academic performance later. And 
So playing an instrument will benefit our brains. So uh, I'm going to offer you three actions that you can take to uh, to play an instrument. At first, you you can choose a portable and a simple or cheap instruments like guitar or harmonica. So there are plenty of uh, YouTube channels to teach you how to play the, this kind of instrument and it, it is fun. And uh, the second action is you, you should play it when you feel free, when you have free time. When you feel moody some days, you can pick up an instrument and practice it. Mm -hmm. It is better than going to Facebook or, or wasting time on TV. And uh, the third action you can take is you should learn it with your friend because your friend sometimes can be your helper. If you both are beginners, you can understand and improve with uh, communication with each other. So in summary, I have shown you two reasons and uh, three actions you can do to play an instrument. And uh, there should be no doubt that uh, you, you should learn to play an instrument. So. Uh, finally, I should say, uh, like Albert Einstein, he said he got the most joy, joys out of life from music. So if you cannot play any kind of instruments, why don't you start to learn one to uh, experience that kind of joys? That's all for my speech. Thank you. Okay, we're coming back around the horn. Who needs a second time to speak. We'll go back here. Hi, my name is Erin. Hi, Erin. I thought your speech was really good, and I thought it was cool how you get a tie back to your speech. Thank you, Erin. Good tie back to Einstein. Improvement. Hi, Erin. Erin. Okay, eye contact all the way around the room. Well, um, interesting uh, topic, Joseph. Uh, and a little bit off the beaten path, and it was good. I noticed you originally had a Bob Marley quote, but you decided to go with Einstein, and that was probably better, huh? It seemed to be uh, more compelling. Uh, you wanted to persuade people to pick up an instrument and learn it, and not just listen to music, but learn to create music themselves. And that was a little bit of a challenge, because some people have already had lessons, or and some people think they're inept and could never learn a lesson, an instrument. So it was a challenging topic to do. So that was good. On your significant statement, it was a little bit light maybe even skipped, of why we should care about the instruments. Now you wrote here, uh, you can have fun, you don't have to go to music school, it's fun and easy, you, can, you don't have to pay tuition, and you'll enjoy yourself, right? So uh, more of that kind of thing would have sold the speech better. On your first reason, you uh, used yourself as support, right? and said that uh, you uh, started to learn the guitar and you were struggling, but then you learned more and more and it got better and better, right? Fair enough? And I don't think you said so much about, but did you mention the Pink Floyd and the different chords and stuff? No, not really. No, you didn't get to that. Okay. So your first reason was personal experience, which is fine. And then your second reason came from research, which I'm glad you did some research. And uh, although you didn't have a bibliography, you know what that is, right? Yeah. Uh, and where's your self-evaluation and where's the first page of your research? You'll bring that in on Wednesday, right? Yeah, good. Uh, your second reason was that uh, it improved your brain. It relaxes you, makes you feel better, but it improves your executive functioning. And this is proven. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, so 
people who want to be smarter take up a, take up an instrument, you know, make the case that way. Okay. Um, when you talk about the actions they can take, you told them to choose the harmonica, formal interest, and just start with the bass or guitar. Start with the basics. Don't feel pressure and find a buddy to learn with. What comes after actions? Oh, the benefits. Benefits. I didn't hear many right then, right? So follow the prompt closely and you'll be more effective. Your summary was good, your conclusion was good, and you tie that to Einstein was good. Your eye contact, you said make eye contact for three to five seconds. Have vocal variety and move three times. How to go? I think I made three times. Yes, you did. Uh, eye contact is not so good. Mm -hmm. Why not? Because uh, I'm struggling to remember all these words. Yeah, so you look up or down to help you remember. Yeah. And looking in people's eyes distracts you. Okay. Work on that. That'll come. That'll come with time. I, uh, people will notice when you don't look at them, especially in a job interview or something. You know, can't be looking down, looking away. And uh, move three times, you did that. Uh, vocal variety. How about that? Uh, about at the beginning, I want to stress that the Albert Einstein, Albert Einstein can play violin. Yes. I stress that point. Yes, okay, good with your voice, yeah. Let's go through the SUCCESS acronym and have your self-evaluation. Were you a success? Was this speech sticky? Uh, well, it's simple. I want to say that uh, my point is simple. It's to persuade people to learn an instrument. So okay. It's simple. Unexpected. Uh, the first example is unexpected. Einstein, Einstein, okay. Uh, yeah. How many people didn't know Einstein played an instrument? Okay, yeah. So that was unexpected. Okay. Then it comes to concrete. Yes. I, uh, I provided uh, an article uh, uh, medical in the medical journals, so scientific articles. Mm -hmm. Can you think that made it more concrete and not more abstract, right? Yes. Okay. And the second C? C means credibility. Yeah. So the first example about Einstein is credible. Yeah. And you built up the credibility of your source by seeing behavior on neuroscience. And you gave the name of the article, and you said it was June 14th, 2014, so it was recent. That helped build its credibility, see? Because it, that makes it more relevant, more credible. Okay, okay keep going. E is, stands for emotion. Yeah. So emotion, I put myself as an example. Mm -hmm. where, where was it? You mean when you said I play the big, big guitar? Uh, so, put myself in the examples. Yeah. To sound more emotional because mm -hmm. it relates to me personally. Yeah. So, it's about my personal story. And the final S? Final S means stories. More, more stories. stories. What were your stories? Uh, I said myself, I ran. Are we running late? Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's okay. So, stories about myself playing guitar and I finally understand the music. Yeah, look, since uh, they're dying to come in for the next class, let me um, just quickly say, 
I like the speech. I think it could have been more effective with more of you sharing your passion and learning the guitar about how it relaxes you and what it did for you, more of the benefits that came to you and be more uh, passionate and excited and remembering how good it feels to play the guitar when you play it. I think that would have been contagious if you were a little bit more passionate in your delivery. But overall, you did a nice job. What was the time? Uh, it was 4.45. 4.45. A little on the light side, but you made it. Thank you. Go for it. Okay. Return with honor. Our time is up. Yes, the final. I don't know. 400. Whatever the uh, whatever the silver is. 400. Because the example you showed us was out of 150. So uh, that's fine. Okay. Right. Good job. Professor, do you have a class after this? Yes, I do. I was wondering if anyone from your class last week found a little remote control on the floor. Oh, you lost the remote control? Yeah, well, you can ask. Room. Oh, I didn't see it. I was in here. What did, what did it look like? It's just a little gray one that was on my keychain, and when I got home, I realized it was no longer on the keychain. Okay, here. Why don't you look through my um, thing in case it's in there? That's <laughs> okay. Where do we submit our paper? What? Right here. Okay. In class. So it's next class. Next class. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll look. Be there. Be square. Um, yeah, I'm busy right now, so have a seat. Okay. Thank you for letting me look, Professor. Okay, ask this dude here. Did you happen to see a remote control on the floor when you came into class last week at all? It fell off my keychain. I'm just kind of that's okay. Did you look in the podium? Yeah, I'll, that's what Bonnie just suggested. Because um, look inside, pull it out. Look inside there. Because usually the custodians, you know, they're good about not stealing things. Yeah. You know, they just leave them in the podium or on top or somewhere. And I'm not sure if it even fell off while I was in this class. You sure it could have fallen out on your way out. Yeah. Yeah? Oh, can I check my grid in the class? Sure, don't look at others. What's your name? I'm Matthew. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Thank you. Bye. He's very biblical. Okay, that, that's your first score, second score, third score, fourth score. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. What's your name? Hans. What? Hans. Hans what? Christian Andrews? Hans Wong. Yeah. Not Wang. Wang, yeah, Wang. You don't like Wang, right? That's not the correct pronunciation. Yeah, well, whatever. Hans Wang. There's your scores. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>